The Loud Spot podcast uses adult humor and adult language in its broadcast. It may be unsuitable for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Also, we are idiots. Please don't take anything. We say offensive or the heart. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Lost Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, joined by New Metal Messiah, Diego. Underneath me, if you're watching on video, we got Kyler over here. And then we are with Mark Leon. I want to say Mark Leon for some reason. Leon. Mark Leon from the band called Widow 7 that has recently been gaining a lot of attention. And the band just started like during COVID, like t- 2021. Is that right? 2020, actually. Oh, but your first album or first song was released 20, 2021? Nope, 2020. Nope. I'm a fucking <laughs> idiot. Okay, well, I don't know anything. <laughs> no, nah, you're good. No, nah, you're good, man. We weren't really too active until 2021. So, I mean, you're pretty spot on. You know, I looked at your website earlier because I was like, let me see what I can find out about these guys real quick. And I love how your first page on your website, if you even know what it looks like, your first page is all <laughs> merchandise, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, then, so so it's a home page. It's just merchandise. You're like, okay, cool. And then you go to the next page, and that's also just merchandise. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, then you, and then you go to the last page, and it's like fill a, fill this out if you want to be on our email list. I say you should also put merchandise on that page. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like so it. it's pretty much just a merchandise page. Uh, <laughs> I think it's like directly linked to our link tree, so that's why that's that. But gotcha. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you, guys, you, guys, you guys should be, if you're not selling merch, then people aren't going to your website. Well, that's I what mean, I'm saying. That, that, that last page should just be a picture of the band in your merch and then say, you like this merch? Go to our first two <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I like, dude, for a band that started not that long ago, obviously been musicians for a while. We were talking before we started airing this. You're like, is that a begotten shirt? I'm like, yes, it is. So are you from <laughs> Dallas? originally or do you live there or what's your correlation with dallas because knowing the band begotten i mean they're, they're getting some recognition but for you to know them was kind of like okay how do you know them so it's actually uh, it's actually a really funny story i am not from dallas i'm from des moines iowa i moved down there in 2016 to play in this band called orchards and we used to play a bunch of show a bunch of shows with begotten and um, their drummer was our drummer for a little bit. Leo. 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 Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Leo. Leo. Shout out to Leo, Leo and Caleb. Anyways, go ahead. Go yeah. No, nah, Leo. Leo used to play drums, uh, drums for Orchards. And then um, then uh, our, our, not our drummer, our guitar player, Ricky, would fill in for Begotten, uh, which, yeah. So. so how long were you in Dallas for? Shit, like three and a half years. And then you moved. Why'd you, you left there just because the band scene wasn't working out and you decided to go back to Des Moines? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. I actually. <laughs> You're striking super... out today. <laughs> I don't no. know. I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know the reasons. This is how you live... learn who people are. I don't live yeah, his yeah. life, Kyler. Like, if I lived his life, I'm like, so I know everything about you. I, I, I stalked oh. you on Facebook for the last year. Sick. <laughs> Look at everything you've done. No. So what, what brought you back to uh, Iowa? So um, what brought me back was I uh, essentially my mom was taking care of my grandma all by herself. And like, I like it just like it was one of those things where I was like, I can't let you like, I can't let you do that. Aww, like, so I'll so come sweet. back home. Yeah. So, it, hey, it, it worked out for the best. Yeah, now you got Widow Seven, and did you start that band? Pro, or I don't know if you even started the band. Was the band like? How did the band even come together? Is that something that you created, or did you join something that was already kind of there? So Widow Seven is my like it's my brainchild, it's my baby, but like essentially, so I guess the full story of how it happened was I I was on the verge of moving from Texas back to uh back to des moines and i had had these two songs that i was working on and um 
when I moved back up here, our drummer Shane caught wind of him and he was already jamming with Seth and Jason. Okay. So they uh, he messaged me and sent me some of the stuff they were working on. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I have this project that I want to put together. And I was like, here, here are my songs that I have. And uh, which ended up being Shadow Me and Crooked Frames. And uh, so like, he's like, um, he's like, all right, I, I got to get these to these guys. So he, he gets them to them and like, they meet up with me and like, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like sitting there like, oh, like, I don't fucking know the, oops, excuse me. I don't know these guys. <laughs> That's one for him. That's I'm one, yeah. zero. That's one for me. I'm at one zero. for you. <laughs> uh, you, said it, you said it, but all right, all right. <laughs> I'm going to be good. I'm going to behave. Um, but I'm like, I don't know these guys. Like, kind of being like, uh, uh, uh. and then they're like, we already know the songs you sent. And I'm like, oh, well, huh. And then they played them, played them well, played them extremely well. And they're, they're one, dude, they're such good performers. I was like, I'd be an idiot not to work with these guys. And did then, you go there? Yeah. Did you go there? Kind of, I guess, with like a not really a chip on your shoulder, but a little arrogant. Like I know how to write music. Like was that kind of your thing? Of, of you know, because I I do that shit too. Whenever someone says they're a podcast, I'm like, whatever, dude. I don't um, <laughs> I would say I'd say I don't know. I don't want to. I don't know if I want to say it was like arrogance as much as like I just did not trust anyone. Mm. Like so, because it was like. It was my baby. Like it was the first time I like put pretty much all of my chips into like something like in that way. So I was like, I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. But then they, here we are, almost three years later, doing a bunch of crazy stuff, and I'm really grateful to be in a band with those guys. Yeah, man, you got that one one hell of a voice. Did you always do rock music? Was that like your passion since you started writing music? Yeah, yeah, I, I've all I used to like. I was primarily a screamer in a metal band, but I wanted to, I wanted to learn how to sing. So I have an uncle Marlon, uh, oh, old crazy uncle. He's crazy now. But <laughs> <laughs> old uncle he, Marlon. Uh, no, that's a perfect he, uh, name. <laughs> um, he uh, he went to he went to school for music and he he got me into rock like he was in the nice. Poison Motley Crue, oh, uh, White Snake. He met White Snake. He met Steve Vai back in the eighties. Like just, I don't crazy. know. Yeah, he yeah he really was. But now like uh, he um I don't know. He inspired me a lot, man. Like I'd wake up in the morning hearing like. Like I said, Poison, Motley Crue, like just Metallica. My grandma likes Metallica because of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, like. And I, Uncle like, Marlon's our, proud of you. Yeah. Oh, man. They they actually just got to see us play for the first time. It was in our hometown Aww. and we headlined. And I didn't know where they were coming. I had no idea. And I look over and I see my I see my grandma in the wheelchair. And I'm like, oh. <gasps> What are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I got oh, that's amazing, one. man. You know, I don't think amazing. a lot of people realize, and I, you know, I honestly didn't even notice it until recently. I guess ska music derives from reggae music, which yeah. I, 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 I never yeah. pieced it together until recently. Uh, yeah. I would say like a year ago or so. I was like, I guess that does make a lot of sense because there's a lot of that uptone. Um, I guess when you, what, what's that called? I don't play guitar. Uh, when you when you hit the string, is there a word for that? When you go, they hit the strings up. Yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, saying. I, 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 I say the, I say boom, bop, boom, boom. Sounds like I'm doing Mexican yeah, music over it's here. Called the upstroke. The, the upstroke. the upstroke. The upstroke. I don't know. I just made that up. Uh, right? I think, it's, I think yeah. it's called. I think it's called the upstroke. I think you're right. Well, it's either that I learned or something else. The upstroke when I was younger. I don't really know. It's. Oh, I, I thought you were making a dirty joke. No, I'm not. You're making the dirty I joke. I thought now. we were going because <laughs> Sebastian's all, yeah. The yep. upstroke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been doing a ton of festivals. Or you, this year, you had, I don't know if you, you played two already, or I know you had four lined up, right? Yeah. yeah I think we you played. had, yep. uh, what was it here? I wrote it down. You had uh, Welcome to Rockville, Rock Fest, Louder Than Life, and Aftershock. Which have you played two of those already or all of them? 
Yes, we so we played Welcome to Rockville and Rockfest. We played Rockfest this month, earlier this month, like uh, two and a half weeks ago. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed that we can get on Blue Ridge like they're doing this <laughs> thing. Oh, they're doing, yeah, they're Di- doing Diego's, right Diego's gonna be there. And Diego, look, when I asked you what festivals you've already played, <laughs> I saw it looked like he had a little smirk on his face because he already knows what festivals has happened and yeah. what festivals have not happened. He's like, You fucking idiot, dude. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, no, I get no, I get no, I get a point too. See, now we're yeah, talking. I was yeah, just gonna no, call no. you up, man. So, so Blue Ridge <laughs> is doing this. Like Blue Ridge is doing this thing, and 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 I am a part of Blue Ridge, um, uh, in in a different form of fashion with uh something else that I do outside of the loud spot. Uh, so Blue Ridge is doing this awesome thing where it's 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 kind of like final spot, last call, whatever you want to call it, and they're letting everybody vote on if you want to see you don't agree with the other 164 bands that's on this list. Well, tell us what local band, local legends, who did we forget? And so they're they're letting just everybody across the every platform vote on who should be put in. And for me, I love this because this is 95% of the time, this is where you find the hidden gems because it's the hardest working bands. It's the most socially interactive bands. It's just those bands that aren't just sitting back going, they know we, we know we have a spot, the working bands, as I like to say. So yeah, the, the blue Ridge thing. um, I, I I seen that on your guys' Facebook page as, as I stalked the band earlier, getting ready Uh for this, for this interview. So, So yeah, for sure. So how do you, we? Uh, how, do, how, how do they get on Blue Ridge? People have to just vote for them. Is that is that a thing yeah, to do? So so I have it on my page. Blue Ridge has it. Uh, the, the the Asylum Radio Network has it as well. Uh, you just go and you follow the main link back to the Blue Ridge uh, Facebook page, and you just comment on the band, and then fans will start voting because you know the Blue Ridge is Ooh. the total fan driven experience. And so that's that's what they pride themselves on, and, and that's what they're doing. So it's a, a chance for bands like Widow Seven to get on the bill of what is the largest rock festival in the Americas. Uh, is so, it yeah. really? Yeah. Well, see, now I, I assume because Widow Seven, you guys, you guys have been played on Octane, right? Yeah. And on, are you guys also played on other local radio stations that you know of? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. A lot of the radio stations here, uh, they play us. Oh, man, I'm blanking. I want to shout out so many people right now. (laughs) I'm not. Our our bass player, Seth, he's so good with this. This dude has, like, a photographic memory. Me, I'm just like, uh, he's like, shout out John from here, Steve from here, Michael from from over there from, like, five years ago. I'm like, dude, how do you remember all this? So you're like me. And Kyler, and then and then your other band, everyone else in your band's like Diego. <laughs> Diego <laughs> cheats. Diego he, cheats. Diego does cheat. He looks things he up. He cheats. I look at. He wears this yeah. hat like that low, so we can't see his eyes. I watch you, just like I watched the sunset <laughs> in your background. I saw. That. I was like going to comment on. The, I was going to comment on the beautiful I beat you. sunset. That was. It's uh-huh. in Nashville in your background. Now we're camping, y'all. Now we're camping. Now mosquitoes are biting me. Now this what went from I, a great yeah. idea to a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> was it weird to start a band? So you said 2020 was when the band started. Mm-hmm. During COVID, was that difficult to get band practice? Was everyone in the grants like we shouldn't be around each other? Or let's just do this. We tried our best to be like, pretty careful mm-hmm. yeah we we did we did what we could to be safe like we all we're all kind of shut-ins as is so it was like for that time the only people we were seeing were each other and if it was like one of those situations like because i i caught covid oh yeah i so, got it too i hated it Me yeah too. it sucked um yep. but i stayed away and uh, did my quarantine and then uh it was it was back to business. I actually lost my voice from it the first time. Mm-hmm. Oh, not good as a singer. Yeah, no, it it sucked. Uh, and then um, and then I got it a third time, and right after I got laryngitis. Oh man, dude, it was Rough. it was gnarly. Yeah, first time I had it, I didn't know I had it. I think I was a super spreader. I didn't know. I didn't know that I had. I was going. He to was, work. of course, you were the super was, spreader. And then just was, going around like, everybody, hugging them, blowing yep. your hot air in their face. I, yep. I, was, hey. I was like, a, I was like, huh, I can't taste this hamburger I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> Something's not right here. 
I didn't I'm lose my too taste. Much last night. You, see, I lost my taste. You didn't lose your taste. I hey, did. you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna take a sponsored break. I'll be right back with Mark Leon from Widow Seven. All right. All right, Mark. So I got to ask you, there is a rumor. And I don't know if it's a rumor or not a rumor because I was wrong about the 2021 thing. But you guys did play a concert in 2021, which according to, I think, either the label, either either you guys are with, uh, oh, was it Oxide, Oxide Records or something? Yep. 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 Like, okay. Uh, I, if it's on there or on your website, I don't remember where I saw it, but it was a sold out show that you guys had in 2021. Rumor that I heard was that it was your first show, but I don't know if that's true or not. So go ahead. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so our buddies in Vended, they invited us to play our first show. It was their second show. And yeah, we like we'd already gotten some good feedback from um, I believe it was Shadow Me and Crooked Frames and Therapy. And uh, so there was a little bit of hype there. And then there was um, there was definitely hype with them, of course. And so, yeah, like we because at first we we thought we were just going to like we're just showing up to play. Well, not just showing up to play, but we we're there to play. And then like when we get there, we see a bunch of Widow 7 shirts. <laughs> I'm like, oh, because we already had started selling merch at this point. So, yeah, um, that's cool. It, it was sick, man. It was un, man, really unforgettable memory. That's my first show I ever did was horrible. Well, I guess the first show you probably ever, ever, ever did was probably not that great. I played two I'm shows in one night. <laughs> That's that my first experience. Like, there were two house shows. One was a really terrible house show where there was, like, five <laughs> people there. Yeah. And then um, my, the friend was, <laughs> my friend was throwing a house show, and we get there, and, like, you can't even move in his house. And I was like, all right, this is, this is good. We'll count this, this as the first show. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think my, my first show I ever did, I was probably in high school and it was definitely in the backyard. I never walking around like, you want my autograph? No, fuck you. I want to make it famous one day. <laughs> That's two. You're losing. That's I know. Not You're losing. I'm allowed to win. I'm allowed. Oh, here's the dictator. Here we go. Here I, I we like go. Go. I think it's like in golf. The, show. High, the higher you score, the worse it is. All of a sudden. I think the worse All it is. All of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm losing, yeah. everyone else is winning. So well, I don't know, Mark. You're just one under. You're just one under par, I think. So if so as a band par two. As a band, Mark, you guys go through, you know, like you said, you, you guys go through the COVID, go through the pandemic, you you battle through everything that has going on with the rest of the world, and then you guys start making music, and then now you're making music videos. Is that kind of like a was there a second where you just kind of stepped back and you were like, okay, like go from, like you just said, the first house show, you played back to back house shows packed out and now you're making music videos. Was there like a certain, like, this is it moment? I, so the way I am is I, I, especially, especially with this band. Um, and I think I can say this for everybody in the band. We have like really bad imposter syndrome like i it, know what like, that is <laughs> it's weird we do. it's weird like 
we'll we'll be backstage at one of these festivals and i'm like am i am i allowed to eat over here like what am i doing mm-hmm. like and i'm just yep. looking around i'm like and like we got our name on the trailer and stuff like that <laughs> and i'm just like what is happening right now yep oh man um there was a we did an interview uh at welcome to rockville this was last year and uh jacoby from papa roach walks up and he nicest dude ever he goes hey man what's up my name's jacoby when what band are you guys in and like everybody's like uh uh um, uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you have that hi i'm hi i'm ted thing what that's not my name why'd i say that so speaking <laughs> of music videos we got it loaded up latest single widow seven here it is this is choke on the loud spot let's go You choke on the words you say, talking shit on me. It's like you love to hate. I can't let go of your little lies, of the wasted time, feeling dead inside. Question is, did anyone in the band try to do any of those acrobatic thingies? With the, <laughs> with the, with the, the people in the background, anyone even try attempt to like get like on the hula hoop or like with those rope uh, drape, whatever the hell they are? Um, I think the uh, our actually our videographer he did. Uh, shout out Eric DiCarlo. He's the one who shot hey. them. He is amazing. Uh, he he was on the he was on the little uh, little ring things. And me, I was just jumping and doing WWE moves on the mat. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I was if that was anywhere near me and I was on a set, I would like I don't like to do a lot of things, but I would at least attempt to do something just for like pictures. You know, like no one took any pictures hanging from like these weird things, like acting like uh- a stripper. Only mm-hmm. you, Sebastian. Only you. I would have done it. I would have put on some high heels and everything. You I think would've. Eric was the only one. Um, 
Shout out to Sir Q Wonderland, though. Those were those girls. They did an incredible did awesome. job. Yeah, they were great, man. How um, fun would that be with a band performing and you're doing flips and you look all sexy? That's cool. Oh, yeah, it was so cool. It was so cool. Whose idea was that to bring that up? Because the song seems to me like it's like a breakup, like kind of like, you know, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> that's I know, but I have to say that's because three. it makes sense. Because it makes sense. That, that, no. you know what though? That's what I call swearing. That's called for. Like it that is not called for, for because it's it was a, a female. F U B. No, be, well, because wow. it's a breakup. It could have been a girl breaking up with a dude. I'm just saying. But then also yeah. you have all these girls in the background doing all these acrobats. It's like I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but it looks good still. But <laughs> so whose idea was it to bring those on board? I think uh I think you gotta was, excuse uh, me. I'm not very good at this. No, nah, you're Shut good. Up. I think <laughs> I think that was Seth's wife's idea. If I'm not mistaken, I, I'm pretty sure that was Seth Seth's wife's idea. Well, who do you even contact? You're like, I want some acrobatic, you like Google acrobatic woman with drapes, and then <laughs> it comes up. N no, I think she already knew some of them because she's a yoga instructor. Uh see, so. it makes sense. Yeah, yoga instructor yeah. could have been a yeah, stripper. I don't know. Hand in hand, hand in hand, hand <laughs> in hand. There's there has to be a technical name for that thing. I just don't know what it is. There with the with the with the rings and the ropes and stuff like yeah. that. There is, but I I can't. You're it's, not googling um, it already? No, I know. I was gonna I, say, I'm on my phone. Like I'm not in the I'm not in the studio like normal. So I'm just kind of out here. My information's only going to go as far as a couple of He's things: camping. sports, some wrestling, and uh, hmm. what in my cup of coffee right now past that i'm i'm kind of dead in the water <clears throat> before we get out of here i want to talk about your twitch uh yeah. i guess you guys had some luck with twitch i have ho had horrible luck with twitch i don't twitch enough uh, is that like you got a twitch that's like a live streaming um twitch thing oh. the live streaming twitch i didn't thing. know what it was i was like whoa you're hitting hard i didn't know if you had twitches or like tics. No, yeah, no. <laughs> you're they, doing they, great they got, with twitch like, right now sebastian you're doing great they got twitch. You're doing great. Twitch. What if he? What? Hold on. Don't even answer, Mark. Yeah. Don't even answer. What if he's like? Okay. What's Twitch? <laughs> uh, um. No, but you guys have had some luck on Twitch, I guess, which kind of helped form your the band's, uh, I guess, rise to being more successful. Is that accurate? Yeah. No. That 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 is the main thing that helped us. So. What we did, it was uh, DWP, the guys who throw all the Danny Wimmer Presents Festivals, they uh, have a show called That Space Zebra Show. And um, they did this thing called Road to L.A. And we they it was like a big battle of the bands. And then, like, um, you, you get flown out to L.A. if you make it to the finals. We ended up making it to the finals doing a, a live performance there's people like uh, danny wimmer danny hayes jose jose mangan um west borland like uh like oh, bobby wow. shubinsky like all these like people are there watching us play <laughs> and uh i ended up breaking a table while we were playing but that's, yeah. don't, let's not worry about that yeah, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, were no, you, they you, you, were you trying to show out? You're like, if, if these all these people are here, we're doing this big, go big or go home. I would have broke a table too. That's just how I am when I play, man. Like, I don't <laughs> like, I like literally, like, I, I leave, I leave nothing, like, I leave everything on the stage, like, every time. Like, it's, it's therapeutic to me, and it, it's one of those things where the stage is a very sacred place for me. And it's like, I don't care where I'm at. Like, I'm going to climb on something. I'm going to break something. I'm going to run around like a maniac. I'm going to do something to, like, just to, like, make the crowd, like, leave and be like, man. That was a good not, show. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Not who was that band, but, man, Widow 7 was crazy. Yeah. Like, that's one my goal. First, one of the first concerts I ever saw was in a town called Vacaville, California. It's where I'm from. Papa mm -hmm. Roach is also from that town. And one of the first concerts I ever saw was a Papa Roach concert. I was probably Ooh. 16, 15 or 16 years old. And mm -hmm. it was local. They weren't famous yet. They weren't famous. And someone threw a break through the window at the community center they were playing at. Mm 
and and there was like you know sold out at the community center it was probably just a couple hundred people if if even that but it was a, a crowd for the the community center and jacoby walks outside somehow he has a megaphone in hand walks outside and sings the rest of his set with a megaphone That's and dope. everyone surrounding him and it was just a moment in time and when you are a singer of a of a band and you're the front man if you do not have stage presence it can i don't care how good your band sounds and how much i like listening to it if i go watch you live and you're just fucking standing there singing your Lord. lyric not 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 moving around it's not even it's you go to a concert to see a show so i'm happy to hear that you run around break stuff at crazy that's the way rock bands should be on stage when they're performing is putting on a concert putting on a show that gives you goosebumps because when you act like that other people in the crowd are going to feel your energy and you're going to project that energy onto the crowd man so good job doing that stuff keep it yeah. up yeah 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 no i i definitely agree that with was that. long huh <laughs> <laughs> I, was, so, hey, I was preaching over here <laughs> i know you guys just come off the four big festivals. You're in line to do a little something, something possibly with uh, uh, Blue Ridge Rock Fest. But between Ooh. all of that, you have another little mini tour coming up, a little four-day road trip, Fort Worth, uh, Texas, Lawrence, Kansas, Covington, Kentucky, and Erie, Pennsylvania with Dropout Kings. Uh, before we get out of here, tell us a little bit more of that. Let everybody know where, when, and, and how do we get the tickets to these shows and come out and see you guys. So... um yeah like you, you you hit the nail on the head with the dates that we're playing um we're on those four dates um i'm not sure if tickets are on sale yet because they did the announce and um the ticket sales should be a little bit later on but um as far as as far as the whole dropout kings thing man like um those are our boys so we're grateful to be a part of that like we're <laughs> <laughs> really hoping really hoping for the blue ridge thing so we could see what's up with that. Get that going. come on diego yeah, pull some strings friends. dog <laughs> yeah, we'll go watch i'm gonna tell all my go, friends yeah, we got yeah, you everybody, we're gonna put you on there tell everybody to hit up the socials go vote for uh widow seven and uh you never know you never know what happens hey you guys ought to double back for september 21st as well get back on on that tour uh september 21st here in nashville so september 21st yeah well that, we'll be uh we'll be at louder in life oh that's right oh, you know what never mind scratch it as will i never mind that's you know what? He, <laughs> he, he, he is googling things uh, no. on his phone yes you are you didn't no. write that down yes you did he just googled that i gotta know all this stuff i have to know all this stuff i got daily shows i have to sit and talk about all these concerts God, and festivals i don't remember through. anything dude i'm, I'm a horrible. man of the people and the tours that i always say i'm going to go to but i can never break away to go to if you guys want some merch, if you, you can Google Widow Seven, their website. If you've never Googled them before, will be on the bottom of the first page. Or it was on my all this other stuff about the band comes up before, like radio stations and different interviews. I think you guys have done recently has popped up. Last thing, if you keep on scrolling down, scroll down, scroll down, your Facebook page I think was the first one actually. You'll find the band's website where you can find their merch. They got a link tree. Listen to the song "Choke," stream it. Um, Fantastic. Thank you, Mark, for being on the loud spot. Thank you, Diego and Kyla, for joining me. Mark, if you will please stay right there till after the outro song plays, I would appreciate it. I want to thank everyone that listens to the Loud Spot podcast. You can check us out on all podcasting platforms and YouTube. That's all the time we got. Peace out, rock on, and much love. This is the Loud Spot outro by Nothing Short of Tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has to pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over.